Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Thursday, January 28th, and today we had two coronavirus press conferences, one from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine and another from Lucas County. So I'm gonna walk you through some key points of each to get you in the loop. So first, let's look at the state. One big thing that I did mention yesterday is that Ohio's coronavirus curfew is now pushed back to 11 p.m. starting tonight. Why? Well, the state saw seven straight days with COVID-19 hospitalizations below 3,500. In fact, today, coronavirus-related hospitalizations were at just 2,829. How long will this curfew last? At least two weeks, but after that, depending on those hospital numbers, the time could be pushed back to midnight or even dropped entirely. So here's a reminder of that criteria. So again, we got to this point because hospitalizations dropped below 3,500 for seven straight days. If they drop below 3,000 for seven straight days, the curfew will move to midnight. And if they drop below 2,500 for a week, the curfew will be no more. However, hospitalizations are a lagging indicator. So if they go back up, health leaders say they'll have to act quickly and the original curfew could be restored. But right now, we are in a downward trend and things seem to be on the right track. But the main focus for DeWine today was really on schools. Now, school staff qualify for the vaccine on Monday, but some schools have already gotten started today. Now, on the other side of that coin, DeWine made clear that not all schools will be getting their vaccines in that first week, and that's because we're still working with a limited supply. Schools with access to the vaccines next week have already been notified, and tomorrow, DeWine is expected to reach out to the schools that are left to tell them which week they'll be getting their vaccines. Now the goal is to get every school worker vaccinated who wants to at least by the end of this month. As a reminder, in order to get the vaccine, each school had to sign a letter of intent promising to get kids back to some form of in-person learning by March 1st. DeWine said today that in terms of public schools, all but one have signed on to that promise. Out of all the K-12 students in the state, 46% are now back to learning in person full time, 36% are learning under a hybrid model, and just above 17% are still fully remote, which is a decent shift from around a month ago when the breakdown was split into almost perfect thirds. But how will the process work for teachers and other school staff? Well, the state is keeping it separate from their efforts to vaccinate seniors. Starting Monday, Ohioans 70 and older qualify, and they have to make appointments themselves through hospitals and pharmacies. School staff, however, will be contacted directly by their district, and schools will have their own designated clinic days, essentially, to get the shot. Even the doses themselves are divided. We have a limited supply of the vaccine. Uh, we pulled vaccine from our statewide allocation specifically for vaccinating our K-12 staff. But it just isn't enough to do every school in the first week. It's simply impossible. And we want to be able to continue to vaccinate throughout the month of February those uh, who are older Ohioans. And so we're on, on several different tracks here. Those are the two biggest tracks. We're trying to do these two things, do two things at once. DeWine said the state will be using 100,000 shots each week toward Ohio's oldest citizens and another 55,000 to vaccinate teachers. The idea is to make sure these two groups aren't competing with each other for doses or for vaccine slots. But why has DeWine been so hyper-focused on getting kids back into school? Well, Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services Director Lori Chris says that in communities across Ohio, her team has found that youth are presenting with more acute mental health symptoms during the pandemic. School is community for kids. It benefits them beyond their academic content. It's the social and emotional connections that kids feel with friends, classmates, extracurriculars, teachers, and more. When kids aren't in cool, Chris says the change of routine and constant uncertainty produces anxiety. Disconnection from learning, emotional and social supports can lead to depression and missed significant life events like prom and sports can also result in grief. Chris said you should reach out for help if a young person in your life is talking about feeling hopeless, worrying about being a burden, feeling like there's no reason to live using drugs or alcohol or engaging in other risky behaviors, struggling with school or disconnecting from family and friends. If someone you know needs help, call the Ohio Care Line at 1-800-720-9616. And as a reminder before we move on, let's take a look at the Phase 1B schedule in Ohio. 
So the first two bullet points are already underway. The next point is, of course, Monday, which we have already gone over it thoroughly. After that, on February 8th, we move to include Ohioans 65 and older, and then on February 15th, vaccination opens for those with severe congenital, developmental, or early onset medical disorders, and who don't have a developmental or intellectual disability. And the state's coronavirus website actually has a really great tool where you can search for vaccine providers at a county level or by zip code. All you have to do is go to vaccine.coronavirus.ohio.gov and boom, there you go. Easy as that. Now, let's shift and look at Lucas County. So far, 27,905 vaccines have been administered in Lucas County, which is about 6.51% of the population. And like I said, right now the vaccine is in short supply. Toledo Lucas County Health Commissioner Eric Dijinsky explained that the county doesn't get more doses as more people get added to the eligibility list for the vaccine. So basically what this means is the vaccine becomes even more scarce when more groups get added, at least until production levels increase. Now, like I said, new information will be given to the county on Friday from the state regarding schools and vaccines. But according to the state's planning map, Lucas County schools are not highlighted as getting vaccines starting the week of February 1st. However, one local school, Notre Dame Academy, was able to secure some doses despite not being on DeWine's list. And they were actually able to start vaccinating today. Jujinski said he has no idea how Notre Dame got those vaccines and he doesn't know if it goes beyond the state's guidelines. I, I hate to say this, but uh, again, we got people vaccinated and I, I know I don't want to hear that in, in the sense that somebody made a jump the line but we got people vaccinated and again every vaccine in an arm of a Lucas County residence is a win for our county win for state and of course win for all of us in the United States so uh, we all have to take a deep breath and understand that happened but we need to figure out why and so that was my question that I posed to state yesterday but does this mean that other schools can go out and get vaccines on their own? I hope not, because again, um, where are we taking the vaccine from? You know, Whether we like what the governor and ODH has put forth, um, there, there is a plan in place. Uh, you know, Again, we need to take care of those individuals that are most susceptible to this disease. And that is our, our elderly uh, our elderly community. And we're trying to do that. So uh, again, my concern is, you know, did we take vaccines away from the elderly community? Uh, we have a process in place, we should follow it because, uh, again, if you don't have a plan in place to, and you don't work that plan, you're going to end up with issues at the end. Now tomorrow the county will know how many doses they'll be getting and when, so after that they'll be able to come up with a plan to get as many doses distributed as they can and as quickly as possible. But moving past schools for a bit, with a finite amount of the vaccine available, how is the county making sure that no doses are going to waste? Well, to make up for vaccine appointment no-shows, the county actually has a standby list of people they can call to get that dose instead. Jujinski said that list is populated with folks 65 and older, K-12 school staff members, and first responders. Now, how do you snag a spot on that list? Well, Jujinski said no additional sign-up process is needed. As long as you pre-registered, you should be somewhere on that standby list already. And anyone who gets their first vaccine by being called from that standby list is automatically scheduled for their second dose. Now you certainly can be proactive and schedule your own appointment and if you want a vaccine that's absolutely what you should do. And those who qualify for the vaccine next week, namely those 70 and older, can start to register right now. In Lucas County all you have to do is go to lucascountyhealth.com slash COVID vaccine. Then click on vaccine scheduling 70 plus and you'll find a list of providers. However, do not call the hospitals directly. Scheduling is done through the health department website. If you need help, you can always call the Area Office of Aging in Lucas County. That number is 419-382-0624. Or you can call the United Way at 211. And before I go, here are some key things to know about scheduling. You should only be scheduling your first dose. Bring a form of identification with you, like a driver's license, Medicare card, birth certificate, or other proof of your age, and your insurance card. Some providers might bill medical insurance for people that have it. But if you don't have insurance, don't worry, you don't need it to get the vaccine, and regardless of whether you have medical insurance or not, there is no cost for you to get the vaccine. Appointments may be canceled or rescheduled up to 48 hours in advance of the appointment time, and only those that live or work in Lucas County and are 70 years of age or older are eligible to receive the vaccine right now. Appointments for individuals that do not meet current eligibility criteria will be canceled. Now, I know that is a lot of information to toss at you right now, so I have links 
to all of this information in the description of this video, so check that out if you need it. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.